Good morning, family. This is your happy-go-lucky girl, Dale Chanel's 40s world. Or should I say Dale Chanel? Woo, child, this is Monday morning, and I'm at home. And it is no fault of my own. Well, I guess you could say it's fault of my own, because I shouldn't have been out there pruning that tree like I was telling y'all I was going to do on Friday. Honey, child, baby, keep me in prayer. Because I just got to tell y'all what went down on with me on Saturday. Now, of course, you all know y'all got y'all videos from me, but they were pre-recorded before anything that actually popped off on Saturday. Let me tell y'all, honey, baby, if y'all got a house that y'all have to pay mortgage on or however, and you're having to have to tend to your yard for all the single women's and maybe some um, men that can't do work themselves and they refer, re refer to uh, hiring someone to do the work for them because I know a lot of polished uh, well-off men that don't touch yard work hell they have women or maids come clean their house you know a house serving type of uh, institution where they come and clean up your house for you those type of things so we got some plush men out here too but for all the women who are not really plush but they are hands-on with some of their things that they feel they can cut corners by them being single and trying to do it themselves. Let me talk to all my single ladies. Don't go out there and try to prune a tree that's 10 foot tall. Okay. <laughs> Honey child, baby. I got this Roby. And Roby got some nice uh, outdoor equipment to do, you know, some things around the house. Because it was fairly short blade. But it was cutting them down branches out there. Tree like it was a power full saw you know one of them big old electric tank type power saws or battery operated it was cut just big as those little ones and i had an eight inch one uh but anyway to make a long story short i fell off the damn ladder y'all i fell in the freaking sky to the ground with no chaser in between no pillows no nothing i hit that damn ground so hard it shook me inside out hell my vagina is hurting that's how hard i feel and i'm y'all have seen me y'all see how big i am girl and my brother i ain't want to hear it at the time when he saw me fly off that ladder he said girl i'm so glad you fat because <laughs> if you were fat you would have broke every bone in your body because i heard that fall and saw that fall and that was a hot mess and i was cussing him out saying why weren't you watching me he said, hey, you move so fast after that tree cracked. You know how you it cracks or branch cracks after you be done broke the core of it and it's ready to fall. That had did that and our old ass wooden ladders. Wooden ladder broke too. Now you know. I'm here for something. I am a child of God. Cause technically I could have hit my head, broke my neck, whatever, but it seemed like I was crunched down like in fetal position. I don't know. But, uh, because everything happened so fast, but I could just hear people saying, call the ambulance, call the ambulance, we got to go take her to the doctor, we got to, all that stuff. And, child, I'm like, don't you call no ambulance, I ain't got no ambulance money, no hospital money. And it's funny how we think about bills before we think about our own personal health and, and what we've done to, um, how can you say, um, uh, um, for a lack of a better word, uh, controlling our situations, okay? Child, I was so in so much pain. I had to flip off from my right side, which I landed on, to my left side. Then I couldn't rest there. I had to flip on my back. Oh, everything was just going like a whirlwind in my mind. It was just flashing around on my eyes. Even my, I thought something had happened to my um uh, my vision because i i wear glasses 24 7 but i had on some protective goggles and they was turned all which way but up i mean but straight okay it was just all on my face like crisscross or somehow you would see it oh my lord have mercy then i really felt in my mind because while everybody was around me saying we should pick her up we should do this we should call the ambulance you know just hold uh bunch of chaos i was thinking on the ground like thank you lord i ain't got no broken bones of which i don't think i have and i'm still around so i'm here for a reason and 
Lord, if you could just get me in that chair. Because <laughs> they had brought me a chair from outside. From in the house to outside. My mama came running. Talking about, oh, she thought she had lost me. And, oh, is she going to be paralyzed? Oh, it was just a whole bunch of stuff. But after I got from being unjargled, because that was like a big jargon or a big mix up in your body when you fall and hit something that hard. Like I said, thank the Lord it was not no uh, concrete that I fell on. Or we had all these rocks that you decorate your landscaping of your home in the grass. Ooh, could child, it would have been a turnout. It would have been a different situation. But that's why I say I know the Lord for myself. I know the Lord for myself, and I'm here for a reason. So I said that to say this. Right now I'm feeling good because I got a whole lot of pain medicine and muscle relaxers in me. And I thought I was going to just get out this video before it takes a sleepy effect on me. But I'm not at work. But I'm on, on my second job. Which is this. And I, I you know, I could have went to work because I have a position where I sit down. Uh, 99% of my time and I look at a computer screen and, you know, do numbers and stuff of that matter. But that's no here nor there. Um, but the whole point of getting in my car, trying to drive, you know, my daughter had to come get me Sunday because I was in so much pain because I didn't go Saturday because I've been a hard head. Plus, I didn't want to go pay all that money in no emergency room for them to hold me for a couple of hours, then bill me out the ass, you know, for just being there a couple of hours sitting, you know. Then you have to go through their protocol where they have to get people that are that have real life threatening issues like gunshot wounds, can't breathe, um, you know, stuff of that nature. That's like priority one. I was probably priority four. <laughs> And I'm like, oh no, I don't have the tenacity, I don't have the strength, you know, just pump me up with a lot of Tylenol until I can do better. And I did come in and took me a little warm bath and stuff that really didn't do no good. Let me tell you how God is good. I have my 80 year old woman, mother here that, you know, I complain about from time to time because that's what we do. We complain about things and then we do in hindsight, we have to ask for a repentance and be grateful for who we do have in our lives but my mama gave me a, a alcohol sponge bath ain't that sweet a 80 year old trying to help her 52 year old now isn't god good i tell you you think you could toss them to the side and put them in nursing homes because you don't want to deal with them and not necessarily that you have no other choice like you work full time um or you are not really capable of capable mentally or physical to care for a, a loved one that's gotten past their age like in age seven is an age hell probably some in their sixties and you don't have a choice i'm not talking about those folks i'm just talking about the ones that are selfish that have good older or seasoned family members and they just throw them away because they don't want to be bothered with anything them the ones i'm talking about but i've said what i had to say now how are you guys are doing Okay, are y'all doing well? Or did y'all have an effed up weekend like I did? <laughs> and you bought it on yourself. Not that, you know, it was brought on you and you didn't, wasn't expecting it. But when you do things that you know are kind of dangerous but you attempt the feat anyway, then I call, you know, you stupid too, just like I'm stupid. But I was trying to save money is what I was trying to do and getting way over my head. So, it just is what it is on me. But I want to know how you guys fared this weekend. Did y'all have an enjoyable weekend where you relaxed and put your feet up on the couch and binge watch favorite movies or favorite sitcoms? Or did y'all have to go out and do, get into that hustle and bustle because you had to do your the mundane stuff like shopping for groceries, taking clothes to the cleaners, whatever it could have been. But hopefully it was a restful one because Lord know I ain't do nothing <laughs> after that incident happened on Saturday. I didn't do nothing. Still ain't doing nothing because oh, I can barely walk. My vagina hurt. My whole right side where I fell hurt. Whoo, child. I'm just sitting here letting the medication take its effects. And then I'll probably sleep an hour after I make this video. <laughs> Because it's kicking in now. But I just said I had to come to my family. See how they were doing. What things they had got into this weekend. Was it happy? Was it an enjoyable weekend? Or was it just part of work? Okay. But we're going to get on into this Housewives of Atlanta 
situation of a review recap and god knows it didn't get interesting until the very end and then i kind of much pretty much saw what mark was getting himself into it i don't think it was necessarily he was mad at kenya i think he was mad at the cameraman and how they were being so intrusive and picking up all his conversations personal conversations he would have them with his guests and he just got mad and went off so and kenya didn't too much kind of contribute to it because she was being her fake foolery fuckery fraudulent self as she does every time we grace the screen she tried to make everything about her when it wasn't nothing about her and i was kind of str- i was like i'm kind of peed old with mark and kenya y'all gonna have a charitable event and it's supposed to be housed with people they have wealth to come in and partake and give you some of their wealth for charity but y'all didn't have like a black tired of the event now kenya dress was on point it was very classy even though mark said it was too shiny but you know that's how kenya get down but her figure was on point she was just you know a nice looking woman like she always is but you know she had to effort up towards the middle towards the end part of the show where she went back into her gossiping type of stance talking about folks and it seemed like market kind of caught some of that and he kind of put her where she was trying to shame somebody else he made her feel shameful so i was on point with mark on that but we're going to be reviewing the housewives of atlanta that aired yesterday season 12 episode 16 and um i guess it was titled it's a charity affair or something about charity but we don't need to get too involved in that we're gonna go into that first scene where nini's being shady about whether this is uh eva's house or not where she's coming over trying to speculate but from my understanding i kind of thought it was eva's house too when they were doing like clips of what's going to be seen on a new episode season or uh for season 12 i thought it was her newly uh purchased house as well but it turned out to be one of her best friends so because i thought it was kind of weird when i saw her pull up in the latest driveway i'm like damn when you supposed to already been at home and should you even be driving because you already gave us that false labor back in uh, i think episode 15 or 14 So why are you behind a wheel, girl? Why are you behind a wheel, Eva? But anyway, we're going to leave that situation alone. Um, We got Nene is in the circle with Portia, Tanya, Shamia. And they talk about the comings and goings of Nene and how the bowling event went uh, took off because Tanya wasn't going to come. Because she wasn't appreciating Kenya and all her and antics then we got eva is arriving you know like i said to a baby shower um and it was some confusion because nene more than like likely how she had called herself um ascertaining the home situation and the environment she was on the conclusion like we were that was eva's house but as we further got along into into the situation it was i think her name was natasha who actually owns the house and um Cynthia correlated with her on the other baby materials they were going to do to try to dress up the event. But I thought, hey, Cynthia was going to be one of the hosts of hell. I thought she would have had it at her house. But I guess she didn't want to mess up all her fatalist house styles with uh, baby stuff as she did with her baby barbecue and had to uh, kind of support Portia when it was her baby. Talking about she couldn't find no babysitter. And Lauren, you need me? Okay, and Lauren needed to, um, what do you call it? Lauren needed to show up with her when Lauren could have been a non-factor and just stayed at home and babysitted the baby. Hold on, guys, for one second. Just 
Oh, okay. Had to go set the TV for my mom. Because she's kind of challenging using a new remote she has for her TV. So I had to go do that. Sorry about that, guys. But we're getting back to the Real Housewives of Atlanta. And we see the women. They're all sitting down at the table. They're talking. Got Kenya. Uh... Well, we, all the ladies are sitting down there talking, such as uh, Tanya, Portia, uh, Eva, Nene, about the comings and goings of what has really been shown on TV uh, in the previous uh, past episodes. And we have um, Kenya coming in trying to find out what the women are basically talking about. But then, you know, after they spent a little time and Candy has finally showed her little behind up from wherever she was. She wasn't dressed for the occasion, but from other circumstances, uh, Candy in her defense, she said she had somewhere else to go. Because a lot of these scenes were seen uh, on social media prior to this episode being shared with us. So we had kind of got her, her take on why she wasn't in a lot of... Excuse me, a lot of sunflower type motif, and it was because she was handling some other business. And I don't know, Candy, did she know ahead of time? Did you know ahead of time, Candy? They just called you at the spur of the moment, and you couldn't do no better. But reason that being, that's why she was dressed out of order. Um, and then they start having these. Um, Said they had called the ladies into Natasha's uh, private little setting or den area where they were congregating and playing games of this, that, and the other. They were playing this game of who can drink the most or who can suck the most out of a baby's bottle. And it was about like maybe a four ounce, might have been an eight ounce uh, jar or whatnot that was given to everybody. But it seemed to me like Tanya won, but they gave the win to Shamil. <laughs> But I'm just looking at what I was seeing on the screen. And it looked like Tanya had coped that whole thing down. But it is what it is. Um, okay, and then after the baby shower was kind of concluding itself. Candy going to call herself playing mediator between Tanya and um, uh, Kenya. And speaking on the different sides and the differences and you know all the negativity between the two women could they put their differences aside and support uh kenya's husband mark on his upcoming event and i'm like candy could you do the same if it was portia and phaedra in the same arena and in the same uh taping and on the show meaning phaedra back on the show could you do the same could you forgive and forget how Portia was used by Phaedra to get in a situation where they were defamation of character to your brand and just that. Could you forgive that, Candy? No, you couldn't. So why in the hell or have you put yourself being a bone collector mediator between those two women? If Kenya had any coop about herself, she wanted her to come or really wanted her husband to come, she could have went to Tanya herself and, and spoke. Okay, but you got no resolution. You got Kenya still being nasty up there. You got Ken, uh, Tanya checking her for all her nasty deeds. And no, she don't want to be a part of whatever you got to display. Well, she don't want, um, what do you call it? Uh, what is that name? Paul Judd. She don't want him to be having to have to get in the first fight with how tacky Kenya had acted. So I'm like, do your classy thing, honey. Set, shut her down. Say, I don't think so. I don't think so. And that was pretty much what she was telling Candy to get back to Kenya because Kenya was still trying to shade and she didn't want to be bothered with her. Plus, Kenya didn't even acknowledge her when they went to Nene's event. Now, how crazy are you going to be to ask me to ask my man? To do something as a favor for your husband. Well, you can't even act right towards me. Are you kidding me? Girl, get the fuck out of here. That's what I would have said. But anyway, we go on to that second scene. We got Candy asked Tanya, does Paul not want to be around the group? See, Candy, you starting shit already. That's just like some other uh, co-worker going behind your back talking to Todd about you. Or something like to that effect. You wouldn't like that. So stop 
saying who like each other, who don't like each other. Because men don't get down like that. They either like you, support you, and forgive you, and move on. Or they don't fuck with you at all. They just don't. You know what I'm saying? It ain't no shame in their game. They just don't F with them. But see, you all up in the Kool-Aid again, trying to get your film in time, and looking like a total ass. Can you please fall back, girl? Ooh, and I heard you got a uh, spinoff, Miss Candy Burst. And it's not really about you. It's about your family members finna cut up and clown and give us entertainment. And you're going to probably have Ed looking on your face dripping. Drip, drip, dripping like cash money. But it's going to be egg on your face and anything else somebody want to throw at you. Because that's all that Bravo's here to do is show bad light, bad entertainment on how bad women can get down for that green. Okay, so I mean that's what you're going to get. You're going to give and I'm going to review and say what I feel. Okay. That kind of rhymed out, didn't it, guys? Oh, okay. But, yeah. Then we got Kenya speaks of she's the who's a who of Atlanta. She's trying to handle, or she felt she has handled Mark's event as far as the catering, the security, the seating arrangements, and this, that, and the third. But lo- uh, loosely do she know Mark done went and changed some of that shit up on her ass. And she's going to be very upset about it. But what's she going to do? What's she going to do, y'all? Nothing. Okay? Um, then we go to a situation where Candace rehearsing for a play. That she's in. She's supposed to be a part of the shy. I guess it's a sitcom. A little show. I don't know. Haven't gotten into it. Don't really like looking at TV. So unless somebody points it out to me. And give me the place where. And uh, when it's going to be airing. Then I may go take a look. Other than that. I ain't checking for Candace. Cell phone. Real Housewives of Atlanta. And she's giving me total bullshit. Uh, I, re- I can respect Candace all day every day. If she just stop being so neutral. Choose a side. Every time something comes up between the ladies don't be straddling the fence okay you said you playing chess not checkers but it seems like you damn playing unos and uh connect four all right i'm just saying uh but her friends she's rehearsing with some lady i don't know who that lady is and don juan and to me again candy just don't maybe she should have went to school to kind of fix her situation where she could act as a real actress i just don't see it and i'm being a hater i just don't see it i'm sorry um then cameron comes in to check on her friend seemed like it was already planned deal but she sees candy in full effect and don Juan is saying she's supposed to be playing this thuggish um what do you call it what do you call it? studs and she goes both ways and that was her character she was trying to get in tune with her character and you know between don juan and carmen they were saying well hell you got that man part together because you know you got that manly manly type of motif as far as your innate ability to project and acting you know you ain't got to do too hard because you kind of rough and, and trying to swing it low um think he got a false penis up in there to be a, a man woman anyway and then candy kind of like she got offended i like girl don't get offended because it is true every man wants a woman remember that girl please you ain't another background singer it just is what it is but anyway um then her and Carmen have a sidebar where they're talking about Todd and how he's going to be affected with the new baby, her traveling, you know, for her work. And he's doing what? I don't know. Maybe on her new show, they'll show us, tell us what does Todd actually do to produce his money with Candy or what he does not do. I don't know. But then Candy goes on and say, you know, Todd. He kind of has some little controlling ways, too. He be wanting to say what he got to say and think it's gold. But, you know, I'm, you know, I ain't the one for hold my tongue. I get back with a brother and let him know who, who, what, will, who, what, when, where, and is how it's going to go down. But, you know, I can't. Yeah, she is what it is. You know, she talks shit. And then she be, you know, bossing up at him. And then she be slowly submit, going into submission because she, she don't want him to leave her behind. But it just is what it is. Okay, then we go to scene three. But Kenya comes over to see Cynthia about Mike, the love, of, their love affair, their fiance. Uh, Cynthia tells her about conversations she had with Mike. Uh, 
you know, and his open mic book and the things she found out. And I'm like, why are you talking to Kenya, Cynthia? Kenya don't have a, a fast, ready, successful two-year marriage. It's been on the rock since she even said she was married. And very questionable because we can't find no receipts of that. So why are you, all the other people you could have talked to, Hell, you should have been talking to your mama. Okay, because your mama looked like she don't play no games. She might have was married one time, or she could have been two. And she's still dipping and dabbing and looking good without being married again. So you really need to be talking with somebody that got some sense. Or better yet, you could have talked to uh, Lauren, all right? Lauren that just recently got married, got divorced, or I don't know how her situation went, but I know she was divorced. You can ask her, hey, I'm sure you got some other women, girl. Denise, women on Housewives, where are your friends? Hey, you could have asked Quad. Quad was a good person to say, whether you need to be with that man or not, but you're going to lean on the understanding of Kenya more. Girl, you doomed, and your marriage is doomed. But anyway. Can you tell Cynthia that is her life right now? And she goes a little bit in elaborating what she was meaning. And Kenya says, Mark, from all the fights and fusses they've had, he's only uh, apologized to her just once. Out of all the many other things he should have been apologizing for, she said no. Then Cynthia uh, says, oh, well, her and Mark is good, right? And I'm like, can't you see even Steve Wonder? He claimed to be blind. He can see that situation. He ain't trying to help that situation come Mark ain't there for. Mark ain't trying to be there for, okay? Because King is about that life of television and being filmed all the time. And that's not his, his life. That's not what his forte is about. He's more so, he behind the scenes, okay? But he's still getting paid very well. And that's where he want to stay. You don't see him out at his SoCo restaurant going around, you know, table to table. Unless he's just having a good night and he just want to mix and mingle. No, his uh aviance of his uh restaurant the environment and the food speaks for itself you ain't gotta always try to find where the owner is you know what i'm saying that's not how the rich and famous get down you just enjoy yourself and if i grace you with my presence just seem seem like it's just a, a winning thing you got two for one okay a bonus on the side but anyway um that's what uh kenya was basically uh over there seeing cynthia about then um then she said, well, Mark is good. He's good. I mean, uh, Cynthia says, Mark, uh, Matt, Mike is good. Then Kenya asked Cynthia, does he, is he, let's look at the definition of what we call as women a good man. Uh, is, is uh, Mike, is he really good? Does he cheat? Does he hurt you? Uh, he cheated once, he'll cheat again. And is he a liar? And I'm like, damn, can you kind of switching the, the, sh the gift shifts on this situation? Because last episode, you were saying, well, if he's going to work on his cheating, his lying, and all these other negative aspects, then and he's going to take ownership of them and treat you differently than how he has been recently treating you, then yes, that's a chance. Now you're sitting up there saying, well, might cheat it. He gonna cheat again. And in theory, is what she's basing it on. And if he hurt you, he gonna hurt you again. And if he ever lied to you, he gonna lie to you again. And that's just like misery loves company. Since Kenya's not really being treated a certain way, she can't always be positive when somebody else comes in and throw their two cents in on the situation. And I'm like, Kenya don't want to talk about her and Ma, but she will always want to dig the dirt and point poke the bear and Cynthia to get a rise out of her because when Cynthia asked well how are you and Mark going she don't want to say nothing she want to become uh mute you know what I'm saying she want to just disengage from that conversation altogether which is not fair not fair as a friend or foe but I can expect it from a foe but not from a so-called best friend that Cynthia and Candy both have deemed Kenya to be but anyway, we go for that situation. We got Kent, Kent, Kent breaking down. She's calling herself crying. I don't see no tears, though. She wiping her eyes. But again, I don't see no tears. I'm like, do you need to sneak the Vaseline? Not Vaseline. Vaseline in your eyes, honey. While the camera is off, you know, on Cynthia, do you need to get that waterworks going that way? Because, honey, your eyes was dry as the Sierra Desert. Wasn't nothing coming out of that. And you talking about a fairy tale wedding. Hey, we don't know what the fairy tale was because you got married, had a baby and all that, and one good swoop. We couldn't even catch up from you being married. Okay? 
Then we got a scene where Greg is over at the Leaks residence. And he's basically helping her pack for Wendy Williams' trip. Then she has to come back and do Mark, both them as a couple, do Mark's event. And then they're going to be taking off for Greece as a women's trip. So, of course, she's enlisting her help. Um, asking Wendy, because Wendy calls. And Greg or Nene dismisses Greg. So, she, he don't have to hear girl banter going on at his best. And, you know, she tells, Nene tells Wendy what she got going on and what she's going to be doing in the next couple of weeks. When, you know, she starts talking about Kenya. And Wendy's like, you know, she's a Nene lover. She's not made, she has always made that known to begin with. But she said, I like Kenya. But, um... You know, Kenya has her ways, and Nene was comparing Kenya being 49 to her being 51, and she's saying, hell, they both in the same box. And I said, Nene, you are quite right, because one time, um, one thing about it, it's, it's crazy, because uh, it was real when Aaliyah made that song, Age Ain't Nothing But A Number, Getting Down Ain't Nothing But A Thing. Yes, honey. It really is. 49, 51, 52, 53. It's not too much difference. It's just a state of mind that you're in and how you're going to carry yourself. All right. But then Wendy says, she, uh, you know, she like Kenya, but let Kenya bury herself. Meaning, Kenya keeps spinning her wheels, going nowhere. While she dig digging a ditch for you, she's going to fall in that same ditch that she dug for you. Okay. And you can just slide the dirt on top of her. Okay. <laughs> nah, well, it's meant for somebody in a bad way that you're trying to send it may come back double fold on your behind. So people need to watch that. That's just my opinion. Okay. Uh, and then um, when it goes on off another subject, this, that, and the third, and Nene kind of checks her nice nasty saying, girl, I know you want some tea, but I ain't finna get you no tea so you can put it on your gossip show and make people look like fools. And I kind of kiki myself like, okay, Nene, you know exactly how her friendship is with Wendy Williams. I wash my hand. I watch your back. You wash mine. Something like that. Okay. Uh, then we got Portia talking to Dennis. They're trying to basically get ready for Mike's event. Then you got um, Katrina. I think she's Candy Burr's new assistant. She comes in while uh, her and Todd are basically going over their agendas and this, that, and third. Trying to make Todd look like he got a busy schedule. When we know ain't shit going on. They're just faking the phone for the television. Okay. Um, then Mike busts out with Cynthia about, what, he, his her home and, wait a minute. Oh, yeah, Mike comes in, you know, I don't know where he was at, but he came in for the filming of Cynthia, you know, getting her look together on tonight's current events that's going to be happening. And she said, oh, God, I got you, honey. I got you. I'll make you one of my homemade salads and all this kind of stuff. Then Mike, like, a homemade salad? How the hell are you going to make a homemade salad? You know what I'm saying? So he goes in the refrigerator, and he sees what she's talking about. And then, boo, I'm like, Cynthia, do you live there, baby? Do you eat there? Do you cook often? Because it, it looked like the cupboard was bare when it came to that fridge, okay, in that refrigerator. But he opened it up. It was a little salad. Salad that probably cost maybe six five ninety nine six ninety nine. He said, "Oh, you finna make me this," and then she getting up washing her hands. I'm like, "Child, let him have that plastic container where that salad is in. Get him a soda and tell him to bounce, okay, or water, however he gets down." Then we got Kenya says she's um. We see Kenya come in with all these little boxes and stuff that she don't bought for more. <laughs> Look like a pre set up event type thing, and she says she's Mark Stylus. Because Mark told her three days ago what he needed when uh, he's, well, she says Mark didn't tell her at all, but Mark is it, uh, saying it. He told her three days ago, and they argued a little bit about the time which the order was given for her to enact on, but she really didn't do it or follow through like he said. Um, she pulls out some samples of some ties. And some socks or one sock. She didn't really have a good variation of anything to really choose from. Cause I ain't like none of them ties to tell you the truth. Woo! They just was. They really wasn't busy, but they were just too boring. And one thing about a suit, if you put a nice tie with it, it's gonna draw people in. It's gonna draw them to want to look at you. But again, again, who are we talking about? Kenya is not the one. The stylist want to be doing anything. But it just is what it is. She should have let the people at the store hook her up. But you know, now in Kenya, she went in there like she knowing this, that, and the third. 
and not giving nobody the time of day to help her. But he, she brings the clothes in. Like again, I said, I thought it was a black tire event. Everybody gonna be in tuxedos. Women, other uh, women gonna be dressing more so alike. Uh, they are on the reunion show. You know all those cute little dresses. And lo and behold, they, they only person that I felt was really dressed nice. It was Kenya. Uh, I liked it. Her tasteful bling. And it fitted her real nice. She was beautiful. So if anybody wanted to know my pick or dress best, it would have been Kenya for that night. But again, like I said, I thought it was a black tie event. And that dress Kenya wore would have still complimented a black suit that was, you know, hooked up towards Mark. But it just is what it is. But Mark tears her down pretty much. He says, hmm, not my good choice. But since you did what you had to do, okay, whatever. You know, he only really said he likes the tie. I mean, the socks. Those were nice. And, you know, he was shutting her down, cutting her down. And she was sitting there taking it. And it just is what it is on that. Because, like I said, Kenya is just playing a part. She's trying to feel like she's, well, make us to feel that she's the villain. He's treating her so wrong, this, that, and the third. When it's quite the opposite. Just like you can tear into women, Kenya, and, and show no mercy. Same thing can be said with Mark. Okay? That's just plain and simple. Then we got Kenya's mad because Mark tried to change his her seating arrangement. She tried to say, well, I did it. Well, I wanted to do it. I wanted all the women to be together. He said, no, 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 scratch that. We ain't doing that. So then she gets kind of frustrated. She goes to him. Mark, she's just going to go on and start getting ready. And he was like, oh, okay, Chief, but what, when do they, where they do that at? I get, I'm supposed to be getting pampered and ready first before you. And I was like... Now, Ma, you're doing too much. You're doing too much right now, okay? Because women are always going to be the test of time where they're going to always spend a lot of extra stuff, doing a lot of extra stuff. Like Kenya said she had to get her makeup up point. She had to, you know, get her gown in order and all. Ah, it was just a hot mess. I fought both of them on those things. He could have bought his own suit. He could have hired a stylist, did what they want to do, and it was like, bam. Uh, she could have been taking pictures, showing this is the stuff that I want you to, to see if you like before I purchase it. And shoot them to him and let him confirm or deny which one he wants. Or better yet, you should have let him pick his, picked up his own shit. And that was an OG like me. I would have, uh-uh, you pick up your own shit. You do you, especially if you're a particular type person. No, ma'am. But anyway, moving from that whole situation because it's boring as hell. We go to the Black Man's Lab event. Actually, I'm folding. We have sent them Mike. They come in first. Um... Mark sees them when he comes into the venue. He don't make any eye contact at them. He don't have a conversation with them. He's talking to the people that set up the shit, crew members or whatever. Then he finally comes over to acknowledge um, Mike and Cynthia, which Cynthia already had a bit a bit of a distaste in her mouth about Mark. Now she got a, a whole full effect of what it feels like. And it seems like she wanted to shit it out of her mouth. Well, it just is what it is. Um, but like I said, he doesn't acknowledge Cynthia and Mike until he got ready. But Mike and Cynthia was feeling some type of way and kind of getting the gist that he's not really a stand-up guy uh, when it comes to loyalty and commitment. Because he showed that he, he, ooh, he faded, uh, shaded the hell out of their asses. But I think it was more so geared to the crew. He didn't want to get a crew all that time to film him and be on it. So he was trying to do everything of an avoidance. Uh, since the camera was basically hanging around Mike and Cynthia, he didn't want to go there. And it just is what it is, okay? Then we got Mike and Eva coming to the event. Her Mike, Mike Sterling. Then we got Mark. It's getting on Kenya because Jason, his security person or whoever he likes, is sitting out there in the heat. Like, he, you know, he goes to get her out of the car instead of him saying, Oh, baby, you look nice, this, that, and third. Because I guess she wasn't properly dressed when he left. For the event. Because it seemed like he liked to be on time. He ain't on that CPT time. He on that other kind of time. Um, and he was fussing at her. And saying you, you shouldn't let him stay out there. It might, uh, Jason a cool person. Why Why did you tell him he had to stay out there? And then of course. You know they had words. Which yeah. All the people that needed to be out there. Was parking attendant people. Parking attendant valet people. All the key people should have been just. In the event itself. And I can kind of see, uh, it was in the summer that it posted, uh, that they filmed. So, I'm, I'm sure the humidity in Georgia was a pretty, pretty, uh, humid day. So, he's kind of upset about that. 
Then we got Dennis coming with Portia. I, I tell you, Dennis was just like a poster. You could have just put him up on the wall, and he would have did fine with everything. Like he didn't say too much of shit. He didn't want to be there, but and he made it seem like he didn't want to be there either. But since it was Portia, he's already in the doghouse. He came with two beautiful women, his Portia and Tanya. Because Tanya said, okay, I'll show support, but I ain't going to put Paul in this mess. It is what it is, okay? Then we got um, Portia and Tanya. Well, no. Okay, no, because Shamia didn't come, so Dennis brought Portia and Tanya. And, of course, she got Tanya seated somewhere else and not with Portia. But then, uh, either some seats had been purchased or not been purchased, but it was two seats at uh, Portia and Dennis' table. So, uh, Portia told her to come on over with them and slide. But Kenya wasn't trying to have it. She was like, uh-uh. This table's already reserved for somebody. They are coming. And just lying her ass off because she didn't want to see uh, Tanya and uh, Portia be cutting up. It looked like they're having a nice time. Even, they, every, even though everything around is kind of boring. But she just didn't want Tanya to be seated uh, with people she can talk to. So that was just real, real shady. And maybe that's why Mark had rearranged the seating so it, it would be like a mixture of both. Some they didn't know, some they did know. But King was just being trifling as hell, wanting her things to be seen, how she wants them to be seen. So she made her point across, or got a point across. Then we got Marla comes in with her two nephews. And now she coming to try to see where her seating arrangement is because she didn't see her name or her placard of her name on the uh, tables that she was passing by. So Kenya had to re re reintroduce her to the back part of the uh, gala that was going on. And maybe she misunderstood. Maybe Kenya was saying in back of her, that's where your seat is. But it wasn't her to come in with both of her nephews. It wasn't a kid event. It was more so a grown folks event where they were trying to raise money. But... Um, Marlo didn't see it that way. She wanted to bring her boys. And they were dressed very nice and everything. It wasn't a party for them. I do say that. But Marlo's going to do what she want to do. And since she fucked up uh, Marlo's wig event, I'm pretty sure that was coming while she wanted to fuck up Kenya's event. But anyway, Kenya goes into a whole talk about people being grateful and all that. And that Marlo didn't even pay for a ticket. And let alone the other two Boy, she brought a ticket. So, she was pretty much telling everybody that would listen to her. She trying to come start drama at this place. At a charity event. And that's not going to happen. And she's just being tacky and not paying for it. You know, just telling all the secrets to people. Which was candy. Um, and the world, which is us. To let us know that Marlo didn't even pay for a ticket. She was just coming. And that was it. So I'm like, damn, was this a, a event where it was kind of like staged? Because you need some heavy hitters in there if you're trying to serve. And uh, your platform of what you're trying to do with these young men. You needed some heavy hit hitters to be dropping money as they coming in the door. And then you acknowledge the heavy hitters who funded your project if you wanted to at the end. But like I said, it was kind of like a stage scene and it wasn't playing to its parts. Because nobody was dressed in black attire. You see how Kanye West is dressed. You see how uh, Kurt Franklin is dressed. Don't mind the sign throwing up. I just put that in there for the people that's trying to understand. Uh... Uh, the industry and the Illuminati and uh, who they're basically paying homage to. Don't just focus on the secular world. We got to get into the gospel of music arena as well because they do the same thing. Then we got um, we got Tanya. She shows up. Uh, no, we got Marla. She shows up. She couldn't find her table. So she called herself walking out as Cannon Burrs and Todd Tucker are walking in. Did y'all see that mess of an outfit candy? Well, I'm like, again, inappropriate. Then you have five stars up there. Who are you saluting it to, Candy? Mm, the Illuminati. All right, girl, go ahead. Uh, and they kind of motion to understand what it pretty much happened. So Cynthia uh, and Portia, they go out to talk to Marlo to convince her to come on back in. She got, we, they got some free seats at their table. You will sit there. We'll work it all out after the event. Because, yep, Kenya was wrong. But then anybody check Kenya? Hell no. Nah. Then we got Nene walk in with Greg. Looked like it was just on time. Because he wanted to 
he wasn't great to speak prior to sitting down. They just went on and got him when he came on in the room. Wasn't paying attention to what he was saying. Wasn't necessary anyway. Then Kenya, you know, she get mad at Marlo. Cynthia says Kenya should have been mad at Mark and not put all her anger on Marlo. Um, then somehow Candy makes, uh, not Candy, but uh, Kenya makes a way or be high to Candy and talk about all the comings and goings prior to Candy getting there. And she's really shading Marlo. Talking about she's so nasty. She feel like she should be entitled. She can't stand women like that. She basically was talking about Marlo not paying a ticket up front for her appearance to be in there in the first place. Then she's going to come bring, bring two other people mouths to feed and didn't pay for them either. So, you know, Candy was just really working her through the coals. And then um, we had overheard Dennis. He played 5,000. Todd had play out, uh, played 5,000. And I'm like, oh, okay, cool. At least they getting the people giving their money out to who had actually came. Which, you know, Candace supported somebody else's uh, event where she sponsored or gave them 3,000 or 5,000. I forgot who it was, but... No, they get it's a tax write off, they'll get it back. So then we got um the security man was following Kenya all the way around and all that kind of stuff. And Mark was getting kind of mad about it. He like, Go sit yourself down somewhere. Girl, no, we don't need all of this extra stuff. We, go, the cameraman tell them they don't have their time. They need to get on out of him. You know, he was just really, really getting arrogant, really, really getting uh unglued because that's not how he get down he, it probably was presented to him that they were just going to be on the watchful side and, and not attacking or trying to show guests uh that need, needed to not be on tv and all this comes and goes going on because that's when the ending part came but he just kept not acknowledging kenya he didn't acknowledge her as helping him put this feat of a charity event together he paid no homage to her at all then, you know, he was went back and sounded like he was having an argument with Kenya, but it's more so the production men telling them they need to take wrap it up, period, and point blank now. End it now. So that's what we thought he was saying it to Kenya in their marriage, but he was actually saying about the print uh what do you call it, the film and crew to wrap it up because he didn't want them there no more. It was his private event and they was more so looking to start stuff and how Kenya was acting towards everybody instead of paying attention. And I'm like, Ma, did you not know they were going to do you that way? They do it all the time. They don't want no PSAs on here. They don't want to see all this kind of stuff. They want drama to break out. So that's what it was, guys. Uh, but that's all I had for this video. Hopefully I'll enjoy it. Uh, be good to yourself. yourselves. I'm going to be good to mine. Take me another pill. I'm going to go lay down somewhere. And, uh, hopefully upload some more. Because I will be home for a couple of days. Because, and I really was really put out for the whole week. Or basically when I felt I could return to work. But like I said, I'm a strong, vibrant woman. And... I don't let too much get me down, but at, at the time being, I couldn't even move. So with the medication being in my system, now I can move, and which each progressing day, it should get better. So don't look for no updates uh, for me exercising for a couple of weeks, okay? Because it's probably taking six weeks to get on, undone, unglued with this pain, but we're going to take it on a day-by-day -day situation. But love and pieces, love and caring. And love is thrown to all my family members. Embrace each other. Hug each other. Even if it's just in your imagination. And continue to give love. And I will see y'all next video. But don't forget to subscribe uh, to the channel if you already have. Bring somebody else over and do. I'm sure they'll get used to how we circulate around here. And they'll enjoy themselves and have a good old time. And um, share my videos and like my videos, guys. Because it's always a family affair. Just like that little picture. But we be keeping it real. We don't be doing subliminals. We just come at you the way we feel. And hopefully you can take it and withstand it. Or don't act the way that you're acting. Over here at the family affair. So I love y'all to the core. And I'll see y'all next video.